Have you ever had doubts about history you learned from a school, TV, newspaper, and so on? Every day, we are constantly exposed to various media that form our perception of past events. This is a video produced by three international high school students. Misha from China, Ariha from Japan, and Su from South Korea. Our purpose is to compare the perspectives of our nations about the Korean War to explore whether the information we learn in our environment is biased or not. Before we go into three perspectives, we will introduce the general information of the Korean War. In 1945, the establishment of the 38th parallel divided Korean Peninsula into two, the communist North Korea supported by the Soviet Union and the capitalist South Korea assisted by the United States. When the Cold War was coming to an end, a civil war started by the northern invasion of the South broke out on June 25, 1950. The North Koreans quickly advanced to the South in the first two months. The United Nations Security Council overturned the situation by dispatching military forces, which mainly consisted of U.S. troops to aid South Korea. As the U.N. forces pushed all the way north to Chinese border, China joined the war on North Korea's side in October 1950. In mid-1951, both sides of the fight were willing to accept a ceasefire that maintained the 38th parallel boundary. However, they could not agree on what to do with the prisoners of war. After two years of negotiation, the Korean War ended on July 27, 1953 by signing an agreement of allowing the prisoners to stay where they liked and giving South Korea extra territories. About 5 million people died in this war. On 1950, June 25th, the North Korea attacked South Korea and crossed the 38th parallel line. The North Korea had crossed several times before, so people were in a serious state of tension. And Sung Man Rhee, the president who governed dictatorship, informed the radio, Everybody, do not worry. Nations' forces that are defending the capital are impregnable. Do not worry. UN is coming to help us, so please, don't be anxious. Which turned out that he was actually evacuating down to south. After people heard that they were betrayed and were tricked by the president, they started to not believe him. They showed anger towards his betrayal, saying, He abandoned us to save himself. In order to evacuate to the south, people had to go across the bridge in Hangang. Meanwhile, the South Korean military stopped them. Eventually, they exploded the bridge and all the citizens fell into water and died. As the war was getting longer, the government had to send more men into the war. Most of them couldn't come back to Korea and the war also made millions of people that were seriously injured. The children became orphans and the citizens became separated families over up to 10 million people. Additionally, the economic crisis got worse every time due to the devastated land, streets, buildings, and railroad. The capitalist government mostly influenced on the citizens due to the propaganda of the media. They made posters which were criticizing the communists and North Korea at the same time. In school, the teachers also brainwashed children by strongly encouraging to make posters and write a composition about opposing ideas towards communism and North Korea. The brainwashed citizens eventually followed the government's strongly biased opinion against communism. In conclusion, South Korea's self-opinion on the war is that the government managed to protect from North Korea's intrusion and were able to protect capitalism. Eventually, deterioration in North Korea and South Korea, the Korean War resulted into South Korea's thought for the government's self-interest, which led to division in between the government and public opinion. Now, let's go into the Chinese perspective. On June 27, 1950, Truman mobilized the United States 7th Fleet towards the coast of Taiwan. On the next day, Chinese Premier and Foreign Minister Zhou Enlai published a statement in response. He stated that the U.S. action stopped China from liberating Taiwan. 
In addition, the motive behind Sigma Rhee to attack North Korea was a scheduled step of the U.S. It aimed for making excuses of invading East Asia and intervening Asian affairs. In order to defend peace, China called on people to rise up and stop this new aggression of U.S. imperialism against the East. So China mostly focused on the U.S. actions and ignored the public governments of South Korea and Japan. In mid-September, General MacArthur ordered the UN forces to cross the 38th parallel. The approach to China's border was one of the reasons that China involved in the Korean War. In early October, China accepted North Korea's request for military aid. Chinese People's Volunteers Army started to join the fight. During that period, propaganda played an important role in leading the Chinese public will. Most people believed that they were being threatened by the U.S. The overall opinion was to fight against the possible invasion and defend China's territories. For example, this eye-catching propaganda poster was created by a governmental association in 1951. Its title resists the U.S. and support North Korea to save neighbors and ourselves simply demonstrated its theme. It established the great image of communist China in contrast with the inferior U.S. to promote nationalism. On the poster, a Chinese stopped a U.S. soldier from lighting a bomb in North Korea near China's border, and there was a map depicting the U.S. plan to invade China underneath. Influenced by this common impression of the so-called imperialist invader, Chinese people considered the political decision of sending troops to help North Korea necessary, righteous, and justified. Nowadays, in standard Chinese history textbooks for middle school students, the above opinions remain unchanged. The given name of the Korean War was the war to resist U.S. aggression and support North Korea. The textbook rarely mentions what had happened before China's involvement in the war and other perspectives. It also greatly praises the soldiers died in this war as national heroes. In conclusion, the Chinese perspective of the Korean War was and is all about defending their home country by driving away the U.S. forces, since their situation was predicted to be dangerous if North Korea was occupied by the U.S. Also because of this goal, the Chinese believed that they had won the war. So how did Japan perceive Korean War? On September 8, 1951, in San Francisco, the Japanese Prime Minister Shigeru Yoshida signed the post-World War II peace treaty with 48 Western nations, which officially accepted Japan's independence after the World War. And at the same time, Yoshida signed a security treaty with the U.S. that allowed the U.S. Army to station in Japan. These two agreements express Japan's support on capitalism and Cold War. Such political background brought a huge economic boom as Japan became a crucial supply basis to the UN Army during the Korean War. And over the three years of the war, Japanese industry raised $10 billion due to the special procurements for the UN Army. Japan supported the military by mainly supplying trucks and other vital equipments for the war. Such large economic expansion was sometimes referred as the God's gift. And in Japan, the media reported the affairs in Korean War right after it broke out. However, most of them soon turned their interest to the Western involvement. According to Yoshi Kazuhido's research, the majority of the newspaper editorials at that time supported the military action of the UN Army. Interestingly, there were observations that some newspapers tried to manipulate the public opinion by escalating their claims. For example, Yomiuri Shimbun wrote that neutral means escapism and that the UN military is the dignified crusade pursuing freedom. So, all in all, the media was focused on the Western countries and had little interest in Korea or the other countries involved in the war. And this is how the media also influenced how the Japanese people viewed other Asian countries. Kanji Akagi, a Japanese political scientist, said that, except for the southern half of Korea, the most part of Asia disappeared from Japanese people's mind after the Korean War.
In the Korean War, the governments in South Korea, China, and Japan were affected economically and politically to different extents, so they had different perspectives. This was reflected on each country's public opinion because the citizens were exposed to the selective information by the media. These national perspectives were likely to affect how we learn history nowadays and help to create unity in each society. So let us ask, how do you learn and view your country's history? Do your friends, teachers, family share the same perspective as yours? If so, how can we learn history without bias? Now, is it okay for you to know various perspectives and take a position even though you may not discover the truth beyond?